I'm L.A. Little, and this is your weekly T.A. Wrap. We take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves, what happened last week? And what does it tell us about the coming one? You know, I do this show once a week, every Sunday night, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of the Rocky Mountains. Folks, I'm glad you could join me this evening. Uh... You know, for a week that uh, the the indexes really didn't go anywhere, um, there was actually quite a bit that happened, and uh, we'll spend a little time tonight looking at that. Uh, it was pretty much flat on the week. Uh, if we look at the indexes, we can kind of see that flatness, and uh, let's pop into those and start with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to pull up uh, the SPX to start with, as usual. And you can see here it was... You know, last week uh, on the SPX the close was uh, 1759. This week it closed was 1761. So you basically had a two-point move. You did a doji. You've broken out. You haven't came back yet. You actually had a little higher volume last week. On the on the daily, you actually had to push up early in the week and then the comeback afterwards at the end of the week. And then Friday was pretty much, uh, uh, you know, a sideways day. Friday did test under Thursday had less volume, that pattern suggests that we're probably going to try to do a little bit more testing to the upside on the S&P 500. That also is what you see in most of these other indexes as well. If we turn over to the Dow, uh, the Dow actually went up, remember it went all the way back up on Wednesday tested, and that was the Federal Reserve. They gave us their latest, uh, you know, understanding of what they're going to do which is basically nothing different we're going to keep feeding money to this market and to this economy until you know the sky turns uh, gray or something i don't know what they're going to you know they, they say it's data dependent well the data isn't changing so i guess they'll just keep feeding it went up tested failed came back volume expands a little bit a little bit lighter on friday it was actually uh the low i believe on this one was higher 15 544 and Friday was uh, no it was actually slightly lower so same scenario here you get slightly lower less volume right you test this thing wants to go back up and test some more that's also the case elsewhere if we look at the broad composite on the NASDAQ the NASDAQ up here testing if we look at it on the weekly this is the one that's more interesting 3961.10, you get 3966, you do 98 on that one, you did 97 on the previous one. So even though you get up and over, it's not a two bar reversal, it's just an over under because you got slightly more volume. And that's been the story forever. This thing's just hanging up here, doesn't want to break down. The one we were watching in particular was uh, the NDX. And we were watching the NDX because there's this nice, nice little ledge down here at the bottom, right? Friday it came down two, maybe three times intraday try to break that ledge. The bottom of this bar that it was trying to break has 22.2. We only did 19 coming back into it on Friday. Couldn't break it down. This thing's going to flip around and try to go back up as well. So if there is one index that has been telling us something is the Russell. And the Russell, this is the most interesting one because the Russell traded up, you know, at the highs last week, got a doji at the highs. I believe it was a two bar if I remember. Let me look back at it. So let me see, the, the high on the prior week, no, it wasn't a two bar. It was an over under doji, higher volume. We come off, we have some volume expansion. If you go over here though, and you look at the daily, the daily came in to do a retest regen on that high, right? That high has 323. We came in and did it on 368. So we hit it with more volume, but we did a uh, uh, we did a like a hammer reversal or a hammer type pattern and came back up. What's going to be interesting is how this one comes back up into this bar, the October 30th bar. No, there wasn't a lot of volume there, but that was the wide price spread bar off the top. That anchors now resistance on the way back up. That's the bar to watch. That's the one that will probably tell us 
whether this market's simply going to flip around and go all the way back up and start making new highs again, or if we're going to actually fail in the attempt to make new highs or stay at, you know, go to new highs and stay there. And that's really going to be the story this week. The Russell kind of is the main character in the drama. Uh, this is the one to be watching, in my opinion. As we came down, volume expanded. Now, if you flip over and you look at the ETF, volume expanded tremendously on this thing. I don't know what was happening with it, or, you know, I didn't get a chance to go look at this, but I believe that volume was correct. Let's look at a different chart here and see if true. So if I go to the IWM here on a different charting system, well, if I could type it in right, let's try it again. So IWM, and yes, we have the same scenario here, big volume expansion on Friday. So what was happening with the, the, the Russell and why so much in the IWM, I have no idea. Um, I really didn't dig around to try to figure it out. But the story to me is that when you get this kind of move in an index, right, and you come hammering into those highs, you're, you're probably going to come back and see them again. So that suggests that even though this thing's going to flip around, and we see that on the other indexes, the odds are it's probably not going to break out yet and probably going to come back at you again before it's over. And that's going to give it a chance to break down again. Now, whether it will or won't, we don't have enough information. So far, the sellers totally disappear as we come back into areas where they have to pick up, right, and sell more. And uh, that just isn't happening. And, and as long as that doesn't happen, this market isn't going to work much lower. Uh, but there will probably be one more shot at it. But that, to me, looks like that shot's going to come after we try to test the highs again on these indexes. If we look at the sectors, the sectors are going to talk about this uh, to some degree as well. If we pop over here and look at the transports, the transports just climbing higher. You know, and I've, I've got the weeklies up, new high, absolutely no volume as we're going up there. You know, I mean, volume is tailing off to a to a, like a death spiral, 621,000. I mean, back in here we were doing 5 million. Now we're doing 600,000. I mean, it's getting pretty ridiculous. But, you know, as long as they can keep it up here, they're going to keep it up here. I would take note of the daily. You came down, volume expands a little bit. You go back up, you got nothing. That suggests to me with this doji over here as well, that thing's probably about done and it's going to want to try to retrace here at some point semiconductors. These guys have been the power in the NASDAQ. You got two bars back down, volume just disappears. This looks to me like it's going to try to test one more time. XLB. So the, the, if you remember last week, the other major item, I should say, of significance when the Federal Reserve said what they were going to say, there seemed to be, the market seemed to take that as more of an opportunity to taper. And the reason I say that is because we saw dollar spike higher, and we'll look at it in a second. We saw the bonds spike lower. A little bit of delayed reaction on the bonds, you know, not, not much of a spike until Friday, but the dollar clearly took off. And that, you know, that, that's an interesting scenario because the dollar, if you remember, when we get over there and look at it, the dollar was down at the lows on a weekly basis, even on a monthly basis, and the euro was trying to break back out on the top side. But that relationship, if in fact those ranges hold, they suggest that the tapering probably is going to be back on the table here some point, and some point soon. And there's some other suggestions of that too, and we'll look at some of those. But if that's true, these equities are going to have a hard time just continuing to push higher. And you're seeing that, and the reason I segued into that is you're seeing that here in the XLB. The XLB, of course, being commodities, is one of the ones that feel a stronger dollar. And you can see they worked lower all five days. They couldn't really get anything going. 
no big damage, but they're telling you that they're struggling here, and they're struggling because of a dollar. If we go look at the XLE, XLE probably will struggle as a result of dollar two. We had breakdown in the oil market. I've talked about it. Um, that oil market sold off. That put pressure here. You also had Chevron, uh, Chevron, which is one of the largest holdings in this sector, uh, trading off Exxon Mobil actually tried to trade down and then reverse that's why you get this hammer but volume expanding uh, as you come back into these areas swing point high you can see you came into it you tested into it you held but you hit it with more volume this is going to come back again it's not done XLF one of the sectors that led us for about two years just can't get it going again if we look at the weeklies we're still up here we still haven't been able to break over it yeah, it's been a nice big long run up here, and um, you know it's done a great job of getting back up there again. But it really is struggling. Volume comes off as you come down. You got a little, you got a little under over, a little less volume into support here off that that other swing point high as it comes back to do a retest regen on it. As it also is doing a retest regen here. Well, that one already had one, but it's continuing that. But it's coming into support onto this first swing point high that that was broken over um, and actually you know now that I'm looking at that's neither one of these are retest regens you're simply coming back into support you know you had your retest regen off of this one way over here and it failed went all the way down now you you come back into this one you already had it you're doing some continuation testing these are really just two support zones volume on this one is the big one the low there is about 29.39. We don't have that kind of volume coming back. This thing's going to flip around, bounce back up a little bit, probably fell at resistance, and come back again. XLI. Industrials. This has probably been the strongest sector of late, and it continues to look that way. Nice big highs here. They keep pouring money into it. Absolutely nothing wrong. This is a nice bullish sector. The XLK has been fairly bullish too because the XLK is so heavily weighted with the large big cap tech stocks. Uh, here you had a nice big spike down in terms of volume. Uh, if you look at it on the weekly, big spike up. You, you got a retest regen off of that. It held. Now you shot back up. A little kind of a doji up here. Volume's up there. You honestly would like to see if you're bearish, you'd like to see it go test the tops and fail. Um, but it's a nice looking chart too. The strongest one, of course, is the industrials right now. The two sectors that have been weak for so long, of course, changed. At least one of them did, and that's the XLP. As we're getting towards the end of the year here, and as, as the money managers are trying to move away from some of the high beta stuff, because if you really look underneath the covers, there's a lot of stocks getting massacred, and you don't even see it in the indexes. Uh, there's a number of them that have been hammered. And a lot of those are high beta stocks. And so a lot of money managers are moving out of those and they, they, they don't want to leave the market. So what do they do? They come rotating back into something quote unquote safe. That's the XLP. XLP broke out. Broke out with volume. Last week breaks out with even more volume. This week on the weekly. Gets up to a high. It's coming back. It's going to come back in here and test the bottom of this bar. Potentially test into the swing point high. As this one retraces more than likely this is a place money is going to rotate to so if you're looking for a spot that's not a bad spot to be looking XLU utilities you would think this one would be fine but uh, you know as interest rates go back up this one um, uh, has you know it's, it's held up here so far but we'll have to see if it can continue to hold uh, given the bond picture we'll look at the bond picture here in a minute the XLV, the XLY, uh, the XLY, XLI have been the two strongest ones. XLV has had a nice push again. Um, this probably is going to test the top. I don't know that it can go much farther. It doesn't look like it can. Um, and the other one, of course, has been the XLY. We're getting into, of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, so you're going to have the XLY on the headlines here. But it looks to me like this thing has already made its run. And so Christmas is already cooked in here from what I can see. Can it push a little bit higher? Yeah. Is this where I pour money? Probably not. So if I look at the sectors in general and I think about them as a whole, you know, there's more negatives than positives. Yeah, they can bounce a little bit on some of them, but most of them look like they're about done and want to try to turn again.
then we go to the ox markets and this is where I was focusing as I segued off of the XLB so let's go back in and uh, look at these a little bit more detail let's we'll start with the dollar okay so on the dollar if you remember if we go back to the weekly we had the break here multiple swing points we broke on this one as well. That led to quote unquote a fast move down. That that move didn't take us all that far. It lasted only two bars. And then last week, off the Fed, we got a huge reversal. And we were actually reversing into the Fed, right? The Fed was on this day. But then Wednesday we finish up higher, volume picks up on Thursday, picks up even on more on Friday. We go up to test the swing point highs. And notice we blew away the retest regen on that low. We didn't even pause. Just just right over the top of it, right? That sort of a move tells you that it's probably not done. In other words, even when we get the retrace here, more than likely, it's going to hold and it's going to come back and a test again. If you look at the swing point highs, you're at resistance. Can it get over these? Yeah, it's possible. More than likely, it's going to test them. Uh, maybe maybe break them one day, maybe come back and, you know, fail initially, come back and then come at them again and break them. The next swing point low is way up here on the next test on the daily. This looks like a turn. Okay, and if I go back to the weekly now, the retest regen is off of this low now. The top of it is 2181. We got to about 2177. As we pop, par, as we pop into this, volume is expanding. Okay, that tells me it's either going to blow it away on the way back up immediately, or if it gets a little bit of a retest downward, right, off of this nice big push, a little retest downward, then it's going to flip around and come right back at it again and try to blow it out. If we pull over the monthly, okay, and so I pull in the monthly here to get a, a longer term view, we've had huge sell offs in the dollar, right? The Fed has been doing all this QE crap and trying to kill the dollar as part of that because they want inflation. So the way you get inflation is you make the dollar worthless. The problem is, is everybody else is worthless, right? The reason for this huge spike is the appearance that the Fed is going to not be quite as easy, maybe potentially start tapering here before we think. At least that's the way the market's reading it. And... The euro, which is 50% of this weighting, with no inflation in the euro, and with still the European community mired in a recession for the most part, and the number's not getting really that much better, the thought is, is that they're going to ease. They have an ECB meeting coming up this week, Thursday. They're going to ease that's going to put pressure on the euro which of course makes the dollar stronger by default right and that's this whole you know mess of a thing that's going on in this fast move looking at the long-term charts tested here that swing point low got underneath it held on the monthly excuse me didn't hold it broke on the monthly but it broke with a doji and it broke with less volume, I believe, if I remember right. 225. Yeah, well, I know it did. It's a red bar here. So uh, so that breaks slightly, comes right back, immediate retest regen. This tells me that what's going to happen is we're going to see a push back up into higher zone. We're going to probably get a retest all the way back up to the top here, which is 2238 on the monthly. So over the month of November, a push up into this resistance loan zone somewhere around you know somewhere in the 20 uh 20 22 to the 2240 area and 2240 if we go back over here is way up here right it's above this it's at this high that it would you know that's a move all the way back to this high if it does it that's the sort of turn that you know puts a wrench in the markets if that's in fact what's going to happen and will you know cause shifts in money uh, from one sector of, you know, one, one um, uh, equity 
not sector, but the market in, in one part of the world to others, right? Because the currencies uh, control to a great degree where people put their market from an international standpoint, right? Because you don't want, you don't want to be going into a, a dollar denominated uh, currency if the dollar is getting weaker. Uh, you, you, you know, I mean, it, it, it depends on where you're at, but, but you have to consider currency as the point. And if you're doing that, right, you're going to see equity flows in and out, and you'll see those equity flows uh, come in and force the dollar. If the dollar comes up, force the equities, initially dollar-denominated equities, to go down. So this should put pressure on the market short term if, in fact, that happens. Now, you know, intermediate to long term is a different story, but short term, it will probably do just that. So this will be something to watch. The other thing to watch will be the bonds. And if we go look at the bonds, the bonds, remember the bonds were turning and did turn. They're putting in, I believe, some sort of a base that's going to last for a while. But near term, you know, after a long decline, near term it's going to be hard because there's a lot of, there's a lot of supply up there that has to be eaten up. So near term, you're going to see bonds pressured again, which is what's happening. I would think they're going to try to make it back into this bar again, and we'll see if they hold there. If not, then we may finally see them come back to the bottom end of the range. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. And if it does, then all of a sudden you'll get fear of interest rates rising again, right? Because especially if it's a fast move. And then that also will put pressure on equities because higher interest rates is not good for the economy. So if you look back at last week, it wasn't as if a lot happened in terms of equities moving up or down, but a lot did happen in terms of currencies and bonds. The other piece of this, if you go look at it, and we don't cover this very much, but if I go look at junk bonds, you can see junk bonds begin to sell off as well. Right, so a nice big spike down on Friday. You know, you went up here to test on the weekly. Remember, you had a huge sell-off. The market never even recognized this hardly. I mean, this was back in June. That is when we got the one correction this year, about 5 or 6%. But then, then they came right back up. They do a little retest here. They go back up. They're trying to break higher. They can't. Junk bonds are closely tied to uh, equities performing kind of risk on risk off because if if you're going to have defaults well if you're going to have a hard equity market you're going to have a higher risk of default and these things are not paying very much on the spread right now and so that's that's why I'm looking at those as early kind of an early warning system the other ones are municipal bonds uh, we've got a lot of problems in a lot of cities uh, municipalities uh, they have pushed way higher one more time right but if you look at them on a weekly here, they sold off huge, right? They were up around 114, sold down to a 100. That's a fairly large percentage in something that is quote unquote safe. You know, 14% in something safe is, is a lot of money. Big bounce, trying to get back up to here, they still may make it. The big bar is right at the bottom, right? So this, this zone is a tough one. I don't think they're going to get very much farther than this zone, into this zone at best. They sold off on Friday. Uh, again, this is kind of an early warning sign uh, if they sell off. Let's take a look at uh, the FXE while we're still on the uh, euro or on the, on, the, on the dollar euro. You can see a big fast move off here. This thing, remember, tested highs, got over it, and then just gave it up right afterwards. Volume expands. It's coming into the big bar. I think we'll see some sort of a bounce. If it stays in this a little bit longer, though, it's going to go to the bottom before it bounces. Um, this is the place where it's going to bounce, and it'll bounce immediately if it's going to. If not, you're going to get an even faster move down, which I do believe will make it hard on equities. Gold, gold and silver, I want to pop into gold. I actually had a question. I'll try to answer that as I'm here, and then I'll try to take your, two, your questions as well real quick. So gold, to me, gold comes back in, gap support here. Gold comes into gap support, does a little doji. This, to me, looks like it's going to try to bounce. So I, I still like the setup here. 
The problem is, is that gold is inversely correlated with the dollar. If the dollar gets strong, gold usually gets weak. Uh, that makes this a hard buy. It's probably just a bounce buy for now. Uh, this thing, at best, if gold's going to do well while this dollar rises, which is, it looks like it's going to do, uh, gold's going to just try to trade off this range in this big bar at best, probably. So the question I had here was, uh, uh, the, the interest was in GLD, GDX. Uh, GDX, uh, problem, problem child, GDX got, uh, got pushed around uh, pretty, pretty badly, actually, uh, in terms of volume on the decline. If I get GDX up here, here we go. So if I got GDX up and you look at it, you came into these lows, right, back into here, and you came in with pretty good volume. GDX to me, maybe you can get a little bounce, but the problem is, is you're going to have serious resistance on the bounce. If you're in this broad sector, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Now maybe you can play with some individual stocks, and then one of those individual stocks that was brought up is GOLD. The question was, is what do I think about it? So if I pop in and show you GOLD, which is Rangold, uh, Rangold actually is not doing too bad. It came into the big bar once it prints here on the daily. The bar here is 7 uh, on the 18th of September. Uh, that low was 71.21. We got into it underneath it, closed over it, less volume. That should try to flip around and bounce. Uh, so that's gold. And I think I've answered the questions uh, that was in the email. So let me go try to take your questions real quick before I run out of time. X Rose, the weekly members wrap was an excellent piece, covered gold. Uh, relationships with exactly was wondering about this weekend. Oh, good. Um, I, you know, I think that, you know, gold to me is a great trade as long as you understand what it, what drives it, and as long as you can play it because gold has huge ranges, and they tend to move fast, and that's you know, if you're trading, that's great stuff. So the question here, on the tapering scenario, I assume industrial commodities will do worse. Is that correct? I think all equities will. Uh, it's just what I was pointing out is that the industrials, for whatever reason, continue to see money flow into them. I think it's a little misguided. You know, to me, industrials are early, early cycle stocks. Are we really early cycle? I don't know, man. That's, that's a hard sell to me. You know, we're five, in, five years into a bull market. It's pretty hard to say that's early cycle. Uh, but yeah, that's how they act. Um, will it continue? I think all equities are going to struggle near term. But still, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. This is a bullish market still. I mean, if you go look, uh, and I and I do this occasionally, but if you go look over here, pull up trading tools and pull up uh, current trends, and let me fold this over and pull these up, you can see. Everything's bullish, folks. There, there, there's almost nothing that's not bullish. So it's you can't get bearish on this market, other than you know a trade, at most. So you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this market's bearish. What I'm saying is that you know I think it's going to have a hard time uh, continuing to push up right now. Last question or last two questions. GLW. So let me see. The question on GLW is. Uh, looking for a good spot to get in on the daily. Uh, let's look at it. GLW. Let me pull it up. Well, if I can hit the right symbol here. GLW. Come on, baby. You can draw. Okay. Oh, so you had a nice big spike up. This is uh, Corning. So fiber optic stuff still, I assume, is their main product. I try to look into this retest region on this high, 1643. That high was low. The low on the high was 1673. I think you'll get back into that bar, and that would probably be the buy. XLP PG is near a multiple swing point high breakouts on a weekly and daily. What's my comment? Uh, I like it. Um, you know, PG is a, is a nice looking stock. Uh, and, and as, as uh, Tommy says here, it's trying to break out. Um, you know, you gotta, you're, you're right now you're in a range trade. It's in the right sector if that sector wants to break higher once it does its little retest. So yeah, I like PG. I like stocks in that sector. I think they'll do well. 
I think that money's going to rotate to them because the betas are low and people don't want to sell out of this market. They simply want to move their money to something safe again to get out through the end of the year. That's my take. All right, folks, I'm going to leave it at that. It's a fast show as always on weekday on the weekends. Uh, you know, the weekly there's a lot to cover. I didn't even get to the foreign markets. Most of those look pretty bullish still too. It's going to be an interesting week. I, I think what you're going to see is, uh, I, I think you're going to see this market try to push up tomorrow. We're going to see it try to test those highs. If it fails again, then we're going to come right back down and try to test the lows and break out that ledge on the NDX. And that's the key one on the way back. If you come back up and you watch the Russell, that'll give you some sort of a feel as to what's happening. Have yourself a great night. Appreciate you being there. Take care of yourself. Until next time, I'm L.A. Little. This is and was the daily T or the weekly TA wrap. Have a great one. Good night, folks.